So now, uh, let me see. Which one should I take first? Should I should I go into the details of this first, or should I go into the uh, into the Fermi mode, uh, fermionic oscillators? And then we have to understand both of them. Let let me briefly introduce the fermionic modes. Okay. okay? Let me let let me briefly introduce the fermionic modes, and then. Yeah. Yes. So uh, let us let us try to let us try to understand. I I still want to keep I I I still want to keep this here because it keeps reminding me that I have to do both of them. Okay. I mean I have to explain the, the features and so I'm not. Uh, trying to do that, I keep doing this thing alone, or I keep doing this thing alone. I am trying to do put the things together so that we always have a clear perspective what is going on. All right, good. <coughs> so uh, a little bit on the fermionic oscillator. Okay. So the main point here is. Before this, in the bosonic case, what are the main results for the bosonic case? We have uh, A, uh, in, in the first place, let me write it as A K and A N. Okay, this is just the notation. I'm just defining the notation. So I can alternatively either and and similarly for the number operator uh, k a equal to n k or n l Is this convention okay? So I can alternatively use any of them, either this or this, or this or this, or n k of this, uh, either here or as a subscript. Okay. Now, <coughs> so the a k. If you take a is delta k n, a k n is zero. If you take a Matthews, I am I am just introducing the fermionic oscillator, okay? Because for the second fermionic part, we need. To understand the fermionic oscillator and the fermionic modes, okay. which would be so that is just the idea, and this is just the convention that I could write a of k as either this or as this, either as subscript. Okay. Similarly, a of l as a subscript l, and so on. Okay. So then these are the properties of the standard properties of the bosonic oscillator that we have seen in the one-dimensional harmonic oscillator. Right, we did this in detail, and <coughs> here N K. Uh, sorry, in the first bracket shouldn't there be a K and an L, not both K and N K? Wait, wait, wait. So once again. In the first bracket where the delta K L turns out, it should be one K and one L, not. Oh two. yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the correction. Good, good. Please keep correcting me. Please keep correcting me. I'm likely to make slips here and there. Okay. So this n of k is t delta k times a of k. Okay, and then one can easily prove 
that n of k I can now we have defined this so we do not need this ok and this of course So now one can easily prove that n of k a of n this is minus delta k n a of n and n k a dagger l is plus delta k n a okay. So, yes, and <coughs> here what you do, you define the vacuum state for all k. This is in our standard bosonic oscillator that you define the, the vacuum state to be annihilated by the annihilation operator A of k for all k is a of k gives you zero and of course for for the uh, for the a k dagger a l dagger if you operate on this you will get a one particle state one particle state so you will have you can generate higher energy states out of the vacuum state through a linear superposition of these various creation operators right so uh, like this, you can do this. This is in your bosonic, uh, bosonic oscillator, and you can you can construct n particle states following the same procedure. Okay, you can consider construct the n particle state. Now, and here one more thing that is even more important to remember was that the uh, was that this state. Uh, uh, should have a positive definite norm and so I consider a state a n uh, you can put k here, k here, k here and k here alright so this would be n k uh, n k and a k dagger this is the first part ok and this is a k and k and this is equals to nk and this is capital nk and k and this then gives me nk nk so nk little nk is the eigenvalue of this operator capital nk okay so here what you get is nk times nk nk this is delta kk this is equal to nk and this be this is the norm of a state it has to be positive definite and this implies that nk is greater than or equal to 0 and in particular it can have value 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way up to infinity. So what it means that uh, infinitely large number of identical particles could stay in the same quantum state. Now we will see as soon as we go to the fermionic oscillator, these are the main characteristics of this bosonic oscillator. And as soon as we go to the fermionic oscillator, this will now drastically change the eigenvalues uh, of this capital NK, the number operator, would now be restricted. There will be only two eigenvalues, 0 and 1. Okay? For fermionic oscillator, we derive it. Right? It's a very short derivation, but conceptually it's very meaningful and very important. So, uh, if you like, I can remove all this and we have to write down the analogous algebra for the fermionic 
modes. Okay. So assuming right now we have assumed whatever is written here, all annihilation, creation, number of radius, all of them are bosonic. Okay. And obviously they originate originally from the simple commutation relations of X and P from non relativistic quantum mechanics. Okay. But for uh, for fermionic oscillator there is no such basis. There is no such uh, uh, ground from the from quantum mechanics. So uh, we would now impose that our uh, if I could denote them by the same symbols, but I would postulate that they do not come out at the end. Okay. So uh, what I would do is. <coughs> Uh, now let me make use of the other pen. Chop. So, all right. This would still have the same definition. The number operator would still have the same definition, even if A and A dagger are fermionic. But by postulating these anti-commutation relations for A and A dagger. So this is what we say so we postulate huh? we postulate that they obey anti-commutation relations instead of obeying the commutation relations. Alright? So they obey this and this and this. This edge is still okay. And you can find that this is still holds true. And this also holds true. But this no longer holds true. Okay? So uh, this would still hold true. This would still hold true. Alright, but now uh, we have to see one thing in particular that if we this in particular would imply a k square equals to zero and this would imply Uh, let me just for the sake of formality, A B A A B plus P A and A B A. So this is the communication relation and okay, this, just for the sake of completeness that this is your completion relation and this is your anti commutation relation this is how you define so we define uh, this to be equal to this this to be so here we postulate that let my a and a dagger be fermionic and let them obey anti commutation relations and then i want to see what happens to my system Okay, that's the, that's the idea. So, uh, in particular, uh, a square or if you like a k a l plus a l a k would be zero. So, if you put k equals to l, a k square is zero and a k dagger square is also zero. And now, uh, this thing is still the same. Let me create some space here. Alright. Now let me consider a product of n k square. What would this be? n k dagger, a k dagger, a k times a k dagger, a k. Okay. 
Now, here, I want to make use of this relation. Okay? Uh, let me call them A, B, C. So I use A. Okay? And then, this would be AP dagger into 1 minus Is this okay? Yes? So, this is 1 minus this and now this is AK dagger times AK minus AK dagger AK dagger AK AK So, this is 0 and this is also 0 and this is equal to N of K So, what I obtain is n of k square is equal to n of k. n of k square is n of k. Or I can write n of k square minus n k equals to 0. Alright? I shift both of them to one side. Then this is n k square minus n k equals to 0. Now what I want to do is on this last result I want to apply n of k square minus n of k and I want to apply this scale. n of k uh, this should also be zero right this much bar 0. So, even if I operate this on the state vector n k, then also this should be 0. And now, what do I get? Is this is uh, n k square I can simply write it as this because my n of k this is my definition okay it holds true for bosonic as well as fermionic oscillators both so this is my this is the eigenstate of this operator with the eigenvalue n k. This is the eigenstate of this operator with this eigenvalue. And this holds true also for the fermionic case. Alright? So, I have this equals to this and this is equals to 0. This is not equal to 0 and therefore, this ought to be equal to 0. And that gives me and k uh, into n k minus 1 equals to 0 and that gives me n k equals to 0 and n k equals to 1. You see, so our one simple assumption which looks now simple that we assume or postulate that let my annihilation and creation operators or the modes as you like to call them let them obey anti commutation relations instead of obeying the commutation relations that is the idea as soon as we do that then there is a great change conceptually in the earlier case, my nk could have any value 0, 1, 2, 3, up to infinity. And all those uh, with same k, with, which means all identical particles, infinite number of them, they could stay in the same quantum state. Okay? <coughs> now it's no longer possible. nk has only two eigenvalues, 0 and 1. 
0 and 1. So, uh, what is the meaning of this? Uh, So the vacuum state you again define by for all k. So the definition of the vacuum stays the same. The, the definition of the creation of a dagger k exactly the same way as before. <coughs> However, now what we will see is uh, 1k, 1n is k dagger and dagger 0 and this is minus a L dagger A K dagger zero because of the anti commutation property. Because of the anti commuting property of these variables, I would have this. So this I would have equal to minus one K one L one K. So you see immediately. So you, you notice that it implies uh, uh, what you call this anti symmetry. Anti symmetry of the state. So here now if you change the particle level, you become a minus sign. Okay? This is the, the anti-symmetry property of the state. This follows as a result of this the, the other uh, result that we postulated, other uh, anti-commutation properties that we postulated for A and A dagger. So if I if I flip A K and A L, I become a minus sign. Correct? And now this would be a one particle state with L, one particle state with K. So it's a two particle state, one particle of the type L, one particle of the type K. Okay. So the anti-symmetry of the state follows. Okay. And <coughs> so this is a this is a famous property of the Fermi Dirac statistics. Okay, so we are dealing with Fermi Dirac statistics, and that was our purpose. So you see. Just by introducing the anti-commutation anti -commutation properties for the annihilation equation operators, we have got the completely familiar statistics. Okay? And now, supposing I put k equal to L, then what happens? 1k, 1k is equal to ak dagger, ak dagger, 0, uh, minus, a k dagger, a k dagger, zero. You bring it to one k, one k. You bring it to price of or putting two particles of the same type, k, that gives you zero. 
right? So we derive the so-called poly-exclusion principle. Our poly-exclusion principle automatically follows two identical fermions cannot stay in the same state. So I make them both the particles to be of the same type and then they and then the, the state uh, vanishes. So this quantum state is not possible. Okay, so two identical fermions cannot stay in the in the same quantum state. Okay, and uh, this is all about this. Now we could see that. Uh, I can remove the all this. Yes. So uh, for the for the Dirac action in quantum field theory, uh, you can write sine of x equal to of x plus the positive and negative frequency part and So the complex conjugate Dirac adjunct of this uh, D R P B R of P plus sort on many all other things here uh, you can simply look at the Dirac equation Dirac uh, Dirac spinner field theory but the important point that I would like to highlight or emphasize here is that for such a theory I would construct one number operator corresponding to C dagger C and one I would construct corresponding to D and D D dagger D so if one of them would be the would be the, with the number operator for the electrons, for example, then the other one would be the number operator for the positron. So for particle and antiparticle. And so this, this C and D dagger and D and C dagger, 
Shakti are our CC dagger and DD dagger. They represent our two sets of uh, annihilation and creation operators for the theory. <coughs> and similarly, when we would consider this theory, this would this psi and psi mu were they are just analogous to this. Okay. Here they are four component spinners, four component Dirac spinners. This I have written for the usual four dimensional quantum field theory. Okay, for the Dirac spinner field theory. Here we would have even easier way of life that these size would be real because they are Majorana spinners and they are two component spinners. Life is much easier. However, we would introduce the this is the so-called Fourier modes uh, in uh, here for the four-dimensional trap theory, but in that case for our uh, fermionic part of our superstring theory. Okay, and here this we have to remember that C, C dagger, D, D dagger, etc. They are. They have to follow. They are bound to follow this algebra that we just now derived or constructed for the fermionic oscillator. Okay. So, for example, here if you would put two identical particles in the same state, uh, it would it would vanish. Okay. So you would not be allowed to put two identical fermions <coughs> in the same state. If you would flip the sign of one with the other, you would pick up a minus sign, and so on. Okay. And uh, like when I write the Fermi, the, the the Fourier modes for this and this, for them, I would derive the commutation relations by whatever name I denote the the the, the Fourier modes for x mu. Okay they would obey the commutation relations. Here, whatever Fourier modes I write for Psi of mu, uh, and we need to remember that Psi bar and Psi, they are two independent fields. They are two independent fields. Okay? And for that reason, you see, so, so this is an independent field, this is an independent field. So the, you have two fields, and you have two sets of number operators, two sets of annihilation and creation operators, and so on. So everything is consistent. Correct? And uh, of course, so here 